Welcome to the True Man Podcast. This is an invitation, a radical reconstruction of a man's masculine heart and soul in a place of safe community where we dare to ask questions deep-seated inside a man and explore ways to help you become a better man, a better son, a better dad, and a better spouse. Well, I hope you are having your best day ever. Now, that word hope is a hint about today's show. Thank you for joining me on this episode of the True Man Podcast. Always encouraged and happy to have you along for the ride. So let's talk about the word hope today. Now it's political season and the word hope is used to describe virtually everything. Now, most of the time it's used, it's done suggesting that you don't have it based on a certain party's platform that you may believe in. But let's talk about hope from a personal perspective and not a political one. What is hope? Who do you put your hope in? Why do we need it? If you've lost it, where did it go? How do you get it back? Does everyone define it differently? What is hope? Why is it even important in our lives? Well, you know, hope is more than a whoosh or a passing desire. It is a strong belief in the possibility of positive results, especially when the situation appears grim. Now, hope is a soul anchor, something that keeps us grounded and going forward in the middle of life's storms. And as you know, those storms feel like they come daily. Now, there's no question that having a sense of hope is firmly ingrained in our human experience. Throughout history, individuals have held on to hope in the face of all kinds of misfortune and challenges, whether it's a soldier on the battlefield, a patient suffering a ser serious illness, or someone grieving the loss of a loved one. Hope has always been a, an important source of strength. It is the thread that connects our current struggles to the possibility of future success. But what is hope all about? Why does it captivate us? Why do we cling to it so firmly, even when the chances appear stacked against us? Well, the explanation lies in the fact that hope provides us with something valuable, the promise transformation, and it reassures, reassures us that things can improve, that our efforts are not in vain, and that we can have a purpose to fight for. I mean, how many sporting events have you watched over the years where a team is down by 10 with 20 seconds to play, but they're still calling timeout? They got the full court press on, and they're fighting with hope that there's still a chance that they can pull it together, succeed, and win. That's what hope's all about. And I think one of the most intriguing parts of hope is this issue of control. Who or what actually has influence over our hope? Is it something that we create from the inside or is it impacted by the outside forces? Well, the answer is complicated because hope can be both self-generated self -generated, excuse me, and affected by others. Now, on one hand, hope is quite personal. It stems from our views, values, and experiences. We choose to hope because we feel a better outcome could, could happen. This innate hope can be nurtured and developed regardless of external conditions. It is a mindset that may be fostered by te techniques like positive thinking, goal planning, and keeping a happy view on life. However, hope is influenced by others' promises and deeds. For example, we may hope for a promotion at work based on a manager's assurance or for a loved one to recover based on a doctor's prognosis. Now, in these instances, our hope is somewhat based on factors beyond our control. This can be both motivating and challenging. And while it's normal to have hope in others, it also exposes us to disappointment if those promises are not kept or they don't work out, right? Now, this raises an essential question. Should we let someone else's promises of tomorrow dictate what we want for today? Well, the solution is a striking balance between internal and outward hope. And while it's necessary to believe in people, you should believe in people. It's also critical to preserve a sense of hope that is unaffected by those external events. And by doing so, we ensure that our hope is strong and not readily disturbed by all of life's challenges that will come our way. Now, 
given the value of hope, how can we develop more of it in our lives? I've got some practical strategies for you here. How about practice gratitude? Gratitude helps us turn our attention away from what is lacking in our lives and toward what is abundant. That's really important. Appreciating the positive things we already have can help you feel hopeful about the future. Set realistic goals. Clear, attainable goals provide you with motivation and a sense of purpose. When we work toward these goals, we foster hope by actively influencing our future. When you set these goals, you're sending things out, and that's really important. Surround yourself with positive influences and people. Now, these individuals that we spend time with have a tremendous impact on our, on our attitude in life. They really do. Surrounding ourselves with good, supporting people might help us develop a hopeful outlook. Be around more givers. Respectfully distance yourself from takers. Here's another good one, and this is really good for right now. Limit yourself on the negative news going on. There's a lot of negative news right now, and it's important to stay informed. That's crucial, and that's smart. But constant exposure to some of this unpleasant news, that, that can erode your feeling of hope. So limit your exposure to bad media and, uh, you know, focus more on positive podcasts like this. Think about reading positive books, listening to positive material. It will help create a more hopeful and optimistic attitude. Perform acts of kindness. Be a giver. Hell, again, helping others can increase your sense of hope. Acts of kindness have a have an effect it just it's a ripple effect that spreads happiness to other people and reflect on past successes i think this is a good one you know looking back at some of your challenges that you've overcome that where you were able to build some resilience and some confidence those are good things and it helps you really discern and think about how you can handle things in the future creating a really hopeful spirit for you. Now, while these tactics can help us create hope on a personal level, the Bible teaches us that true hope comes from God. And this is the most important aspect of this whole thing here today. This spiritual component of hope transcends our own actions and circumstances, anchoring us in something timeless and permanent. Now, while these strategies can help us cultivate hope on a personal level, the Bible teaches that true hope is found in God and that the sp this spiritual dimension of hope goes beyond our own efforts and circumstances. Now, hope occurs 130 times in 120 verses in the King James Version of the Bible. Needless to say, it's an important aspect of Scripture. Now, the Bible is filled with passages that speak to the importance of placing our hope in God. So in the book of Psalms, we read, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Now, this verse reminds us that even in times of despair, we are encouraged to place our hope in God, trusting that he is in control and that his plans for us are good, and we know they are. Now, similarly, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes about that hope comes from faith in Jesus Christ. In Romans 15, 13, he says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, here Paul's emphasizing that hope is not just a fleeting emotion, but a powerful, overflowing force that comes from trusting God. Now, this kind of hope is different from the hope that we place in, a, in our human friends. It is a hope that is steadfast and rooted in the character of God himself. And unlike human promises, which of course can be broken, God promises unfailing love. And this gives us a secure foundation 
for our hope, even when life's challenges seem overwhelming. And here, I believe, is the key to hope. Hope in God is a favorable and confident expectation. It's about the future. It's about anticipation. It's about hope is righteousness. It is salvation. It is the fullness and something that we can rest in. You know, buying a new house or something expensive, well, that provides temporary satisfaction. That new car smell goes away. Jobs come and go. But an intimate and loving relationship is a forever choice that provides peace, love, and grace daily. And there isn't a political promise in the world that can fulfill that kind of hope. So why is hope important? Well, hope is essential for our well-being. It gives us the strength to persevere in difficult times, the courage to pursue our dreams, and the resilience to back, bounce back when we have setbacks. Now, without hope, life can feel aimless and overwhelming. And hope is what keeps us moving forward when that path ahead seems uncertain. And I'm sure you've experienced more times than not, it's uncertain. But hope has an essential impact on our mental and emotional health. You know, studies have shown that individuals that have a strong sense of hope are more likely to experience levels of stress, anxiety, and depression. Hope gives us a sense of, uh, of, of urgency, helping us to believe that we have the power to influence our future and that our efforts can lead towards positive outcomes. Spirituality will hope connects us to something greater than ourselves. There's no doubt about it. It reminds us that we are not alone in our struggles and that there is a divine purpose in our lives. And for those who place their hope in God, this hope is not just wishful thinking. It is a confident expectation that God is working on all things good, even when we can't see it. Now, in closing today, I'll say this. Hope is a tremendous force that captivates us because it offers the possibility of a better tomorrow. And while external influences can have an impact on hope, we can ultimately create it within ourselves. We can cultivate a robust and enduring feeling of hope by practicing appreciation, making the achievable goals, surrounding oneself with positive influences and trusting in God. Now, hope is more than a word. It is a way of being, and it empowers us to tackle life's obstacles with courage and optimism, and it connects us to God's eternal promise. Now, in a world fraught with uncertainty and difficulties, hope is that beacon that guides us, telling us that no matter how dark the light that night sky is, dawn is always breaking. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with this idea of hope. It can be a really challenging thing to put your finger on. We all want it, but we're not sure how to get it. But it really, I think, starts with a, a, a look in the mirror. A look in the mirror. What is it that you want in life? What do you want to achieve in life? What are your goals? What are your expectations in life? And of course, it starts with a very intimate relationship with Christ. So if you're struggling with this, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to talk with you more about it. We can have a, a free initial call. You, you can just send me an email at mike at truemanlifecoaching.com. And um, I'd love to talk with you more about this. And also, I would encourage you to go out to my website, truemanlifecoaching.com. On that website, and we're going to put this in the show notes, you will find the wheel of life. If you feel out of balance, if there's an area that you're struggling with where you just don't feel hopeful or optimistic about, this is a great, very, very quick way just to, to look into that. So it's an interactive wheel of life. All you need to do is drop your name, your email address in there, and it, you'll get that wheel of life returned to you in a matter of seconds. Take you about 10 minutes. You go in there and just uh, fill out this wheel of life form, and it will send you back the form and show you where your deficiencies are. We want you to have a hopeful and optimistic life, and I believe God wants that for you as well. 
So thank you for listening to this show. I hope it's encouraged you and hopefully made you feel a little bit more hopeful and optimistic. If you enjoyed this show, please write me a great review on your favorite podcast channel. And until next week, go out and make this your very best day ever. Thanks for listening.